the bigger issues are actually the thermal components. Um, in space, it's a vacuum. If you look at your normal PC, for example, either there's a fan on it, and that's how it cools itself off. It's just moving air, so you get convection cooling. You can't really do that in space, because all you've got is a vacuum. There's no air there, so you have to cool it by conduction. For the radiator, I guess the big problems right now are making it thin, but still able to dissipate enough heat, and also back structurally. So our radiator kind of doubles as a mounting surface for all of our electronic components. Because the electronics are going to be your biggest heat creator, you want to be as close to the radiator as you can possibly get. Do we use a composite, sort of honeycomb, or do we use aluminum? Um, there's different options, especially if we go the composite route. The variables are the materials that we're using for the radiators and the interface between the components and the radiators, because you don't just mount them. You know, flush with the radiator. There's got to be something in between there that's going to like enhance the flow of heat. Basically, a whole bunch of copper attached to all your electronic systems, all your chips, which are making all sorts of heat. And then you try to use that copper to pump the heat out to a radiator and then pump it out into space. We, uh, we try new things, new materials, new interfaces, mm -hmm. and it's just trying to nail down which one's going to work the best for us. You know, what makes the most sense. So, like any good engineering problem, there's always a trade-off. And you're never completely sure it's going to work. You know, things are going to break. They always do. The trick is to make sure that when they break, you can deal with them. That, that's more the approach we're taking.